Right, let's talk title race, because as we mentioned, Man City about to go first in just under half an hour's time, then Arsenal later this evening, and then that huge game at Old Trafford tomorrow between Manchester United and Liverpool. Um, every week, Merce, we talk about this. Every week we think, well, we're one of the three drop out, but they all won midweek. For you, is this the best Premier League title race we've seen? I, I would say so as we talk now with eight to go. I think, you know, three teams in it, you, you know, you could stop 100 people in, in the street today and you'd probably, you'd probably get a split of 30, 30 and a 40. Do you know what mm. I mean? I think it's that tight. It's not like over the years we've gone Man City 100%. It, 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 yeah, but it, it changes very quickly. You know, we're saying now how great it is. You've only got to go bang wallet crash and it could be all over in a week. Mm. It could, you know, Man City get beat today or draw, they're virtually <laughs> out of it. They're virtually out of it. And then Arsenal go to Brighton. Y you know, for me, it's, it's just every week, it's relentless. And because and of the times everybody kicks off, it makes it even better. It yeah, makes it yeah. even better, you know. They're not kicking off at the same time. So someone, you know, like Arsenal could be third before they've even played. Mm. And they won their last game. <clears throat> you know, it's amazing what can happen. And the pressure's on. I mean, I, I, I just think Liverpool at the moment, for me, I just think, you know, I just think they're the ones at the moment. And the time they will all play together is, of course, the final oh. Sunday of the season, Clinton. Listening to Mikel Arteta in the last couple of days, he thinks it will come down yep. to those final round of fixtures. Do you share that? Yeah, I think it will. I think it will go down to the wire because I think all the teams will drop points. I don't think they will all go from now to the end of the season unbeaten. I don't, I just, do you think one of them? I don't, maybe Man City. I think I look at Man City. And, and Merce made a great point. I do think Liverpool at the moment, with the fixtures they've got and the players coming back, they'll be in the driving seat. But I do, I do definitely think it will go to the last um, day of the season. And it, it'd be fascinating. It'd be interesting. I think it has been one of the best Premier League seasons because usually you have Man City and with six or seven games to go, they've run away with it. So I think it goes right down to the wire. But I do think some of these top teams will drop arm um, points. If you're a neutral here, it's, it's absolutely fascinating. We want to go for it as long as possible and take it all the way to the final day. If you're a fan of one of the three teams, uh, you don't want that kind of yeah. late, late drama. But if there is going to be a team that blinks first right now between the three... Uh -huh. <laughs> oh. uh, <laughs> Which would it be? Nice easy you? Yeah, yeah. yeah, just a nice little, <laughs> nice little softener. That, I don't know. I mean, uh, I mean, the guys were talking off screen about Arsenal's running being the most difficult, but I'm sort of looking at Liverpool's running. You know, they've got like five away games. You know, and I, I think Europe will have an impact as well. Same, and you know, both teams: mm. Arsenal, Man City in the Champions League, Liverpool in the Europa League. Uh, Liverpool, for me, are playing the best football at the minute out of the three. You can't write off Arsenal because they've been fantastic since the turn of the year. If anyone's going to blink, I would say Liverpool. You go Liverpool. Yeah. Well, what about for you, sir? I mean, how, how important when you look at the three is, is knowing this territory of the run-in when it comes to a title race. How big a factor is that going to be over the next few weeks? Yeah, I think it could be because, you know, when you're into those latter stages, it's you, you <coughs> maybe look upon experiences and, and we've said it all along, Manchester City just have that, that know-how, the, the way that they can go on these incredible unbeaten runs. But the fact that Arsenal had those experiences from last season where they did dip right at the end. Yes, they had injuries to, to key players, which I, I think played an important part in that. But Liverpool also know how to win. And I think that the key thing for Liverpool is they've managed to cope with all of these injuries. The young players have come in and, and done an incredible job. And now those players are coming back fit. And you just think, does that give them that? extra little bit of a, an edge the, the way that I think we've, we've praised Klopp and his, his substitutions this season the way that he's brought players on and, and really impacted games the way that they've been able to come from behind so it's so difficult, I think you could look at each team, Manchester City, Arsenal, Liverpool and, and raise a good argument for why they'd, they'd win it well, Dorse, let's have a, a look first of all at Arsenal because you look at their form in 2024 since the turn of year. It's been nothing short of extraordinary. Unbeaten, nine wins, 35 goals scored, four conceded. And, and you look at that performance against Luton midweek, a 2-0 win at home. He makes five changes ahead of that, the likes of Declan Rice on the bench. We might not have seen that a year ago, would we? 100%. Uh, and I think that just shows the confidence that... Mikel Arteta has in his squad, the squad that he's built. Uh, there's two that you, you've not talked about there that he's kept in, in uh, Saliba and Gabriel, who defensively have been magnificent, uh, got the best defensive record in, in the league and they have been absolutely magnificent. I saw them at Manchester City and I thought that for me 
sent a statement out. Mm. Uh, it really, really did, because I thought Manchester City would win. They weren't at the races. But Arsenal found a way of grinding a result out, which we probably haven't said about Arsenal in times before, grinding out a, a, an ugly point. And, and, and we didn't see that last year, no, particularly we, we, in that fixture, No, did we? and that will come from experience and, and building on... Uh, how to win football matches, I mean, it was comfortable in midweek. They've got players that can hurt you, but he made changes. <clears throat> Odegaard, captain of the football club. And when Mikel Arteta gave him the armband, I was quite surprised uh, a couple of years ago. But he obviously seen he, he was a leader uh, and his qualities has never been questioned. S Smith Rowe comes in, gets an opportunity to get a little bit fortunate there that, with, with, with the own goal. But I think Arsenal, the three teams there, if we, all, we all could disagree where it was going to be. Mm -hmm. And your argument would be, well, what's your argument? There is no argument because it's going to go right to the wire. All three teams have been absolutely magnificent. And for me, that's why the Premier League's the best in the world. We've seen Manchester City run away with it yeah. in, in recent yeah. years. That's not what you want to see. You want to see it competitive. And Liverpool and Arsenal and Manchester City have been brilliant this I year. Never goes on a win. It's going to be questionable. Arsenal versus the goals. That the other, yeah. I think defensively, the, yeah, solid. That, that, that trio, like yeah. the two centre halves and race in front, and the goalkeeper, you know, it's yeah. hard, to, hard to beat. And they're keeping clean sheets, and you know, clean sheets win your titles. Yeah. But I'm just worried about them at the other end of the Yeah, game. no, I I, 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 honestly, I, you know, this weekend, one of them could lose. Yeah. Mm. yeah. One of them could lose. They've all got free, nasty games. They've mm. got nasty games. You know, Brighton turn up, you just don't know what team. Palace is not an easy place to go. Mm. And Man United will be doing absolutely everything to stop them. If they all get through this unscathed, you, you, you'll be seriously sitting there thinking, wow. Well, well, given that, flicking things on to Manchester City, you go first in just under half an hour's time away to Crystal Palace. Yes, they're unbeaten in the last nine visits to Selhurst Park. But at this time of the year, would it be viewed, even though they're going for an unprecedented fourth Premier League title in a row, would it be seen as a risk to leave someone like Phil Foden in the form that he's in, given what we saw midweek, on the bench. Yeah, I've got a big game coming up in midweek as well. You know, I'm a great believer, take a game at a time. I, I am one of them, but, you know, they've got Real Madrid, yeah. you know, and it's a big game. It's a hard one. Only time will tell. He very rarely gets it wrong, Pep Guardiola. You know, he does it. He reminds me of Sir Alex Ferguson, you know, make big decisions in big games and more often than not, they work, and that's why they're great, great managers. And, and Clinton, when, when we talk about City's key players, we automatically think of De Bruyne, Haaland, Rodri. This man, Phil Foden, he's now one of those players, isn't he? Oh, no, if I'd always wasn't... put him in, uh, as one, for me personally. I think he's outstanding. I, I Listen, I don't use this word that much often, but he's world class. It, he is I mean, one this, of is, the... this epitomises it. Yeah, Others he's would have one of the down, best. Look at that. That's straight, yeah, it's fantastic. He's like, it's like he's angry, and he thinks, all right, then, if I'll get the ball and I'll just pull it in that top corner. He's a fantastic young talent. But what I liked about him, and you can see Phil, even when he was playing for England, he wants to drop into them number mm. 10 positions. Yeah. He don't want to stay out wide. He wants to come into little pockets and cause problems. I thought he was really effective, and that's his best position at the moment for me, playing in there. Listen, when you're world-class, you can play anywhere. Like, good players play anywhere. He, this guy, I, well, I don't know, I don't, I don't think he was world-class, but he was a top player. And I was down my road. <laughs> yeah, down your road you were. <laughs> down my road, but right. he was a su uh, superb player. Up, no, yeah. <laughs> no, but he was a superb player, and he kind of played in them little yeah. pockets like that where he could score spectacular goals and like that. And then, and, but Phil Foden is like, yeah, he's top, top draw at the moment. And Mercy's right, they've got a big game on Tuesday. The squad's still good enough mm. to, maybe to go to Crystal Palace and cause problems. You've got the, still the likes of, you bring in two players, you rested them in a week, but you bring in Kevin De Bruyne and Haaland. They're two unbelievable players as well. But yeah, Phil Foden, top, top at the moment, unbelievable. It's a lovely conundrum for Gareth Southgate to have this summer. But, but Clinton's right, he, he can provide in other positions, but it's in that central position where he absolutely excels. Surely, given the way he's playing right now, that's where he has to slot in in the summer. But with Bellingham and co, he has a conundrum, Southgate, to sort out this summer, but a nice one. Yeah, it's really difficult. One to say, <laughs> uh, yeah, Get the violin out. Yeah, exactly, yeah, Harry <laughs> Kane, and Foden. Yeah, I mean, I mean the, for me, the, they're strong contenders for the Euros. With the, mm. This is probably one of the best generations of England players I've seen for a long, long time. Uh, and Foden, he's, he's on fire. He, like Clinton said, he can play anywhere across... The front, he's probably learned a lot from David Silva. Yeah, mm. you know, was yeah. a kid growing yeah. up, and he's he's that type of player. But he's got the youth on his side from when David Silva was at Man City. Do you know what I mean? He's he's younger than when David Silva was at Man yeah. City, but he's got goals in him, Clinton exactly, as well. Exactly, he has. Good I just goals. he's a beautiful player to watch. His weight of pass is fantastic, 
and he's clinical as well at the minute, Sandy. Yeah. So he has to play for England. There's no question on that. I, I think. I, I, oh, sorry, I, was say, no. say, I think that third goal sort of epitomised like what he's like as a player. You know, the way that he got fouled or he thought he got fouled. He, he goes down, doesn't he? But he gets straight back up, mm. wins the ball back and then goes and scores a goal. You know, whereas some players might have moaned and gone, oh, I didn't get a foul. He doesn't. That work rate and that energy off the ball as well as the quality that he's got on the ball, I just think is outstanding and, and sets him above. And I think you said earlier about them leaving Phil Foden out, but you said against Aston Villa, they left Haaland, De Bruyne and Stones out and Foden just come to the forefront. So it's like they've got those players to yeah. be able to come in, haven't they? And, and yeah. sort of just make the difference in, in big games. And in terms of players doors making the difference, if we now move things on to Liverpool who go to Old Trafford in that huge game on Super Sunday tomorrow against Manchester United. Alexis McAllister, in terms of key players who could get them over the line, we're looking right now at him as being one of them, aren't we? I mean, we're looking at uh, McAllister coming in from, from Brighton and I don't think he, he settled in straight away for Liverpool early on in the season. I don't think we, we saw what we're seeing now with him. And he's been the difference at the moment in time. You see him, you see him mixing the way he, he finds a pass. I mean, this goal gets a little bit fortunate the way it sets up. But wow, that yeah. technique and that accuracy and force and determination think, look, they were under a little bit of pressure. I was concerned at this moment in time till that went in. You went, oh, I went, oh, no, he's in, uh, he's, he's in Clinton's fantasy team and more points for him. <laughs> he is a sensational player. He really, really is. And I think he's grabbing it and realising what it means to play for Liverpool. And he has been so influential for them. Certainly for, from the turn of the year, I've been you impressed with him. You reckon helped him, though, coming yeah, in? Yeah, he's played further forward. He can't play six yeah. months. No, yeah. no, yeah. no. I saw no. him again at Arsenal this yeah. year twice in the cup and in the league. Yeah. yeah. And Arsenal just ran over the top yeah, of him. As soon as he plays yeah. further, yeah. Up, further up, he's yeah. Klopp says he prefers that eight role. And he, yeah, and he you can so see that. dynamic say. in that role. I don't think he's yeah. got the, the power or the legs yeah. to play like six. But he finds a pass, lady, doesn't it? You see the ball that he played for Salah against... Brighton. Uh, Brighton. Oh, that was a great goal. Oh, and the, great and the Nunes one. The, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. amazing. Last that, minute. that way of having seen the vision and then going and delivering it, he's got that. He's a special, special player. And, and when they signed him, I think it was £35 million in around it was. that bracket. Yeah. Absolutely. Looks like a snip. It? Honestly, it's, it's not even a cup of tea, is it, Mercy? It's, <laughs> it's, it's a bag of chocolate. <laughs> where do you drink tea? It's a bag of I don't know where Mercy drinks, but it's. <laughs> right, I mean, they mentioned, British, it, I think, they, they mentioned it a few times already. <laughs> Let's look at the run in, and, and that finish line is getting. Oh, so close now. You, you can smell the finish of the season in the air. Merce, as you look at those fixtures for the three between now and Sunday, May the 19th, where do you see the likely twists coming? Uh, I quite like Arsenal's fixtures. I like them. I like them. I think, I think Brighton's the one there for me, the Brighton game. I think Brighton can turn up on any given day and beat anybody. I think if Arsenal play like they did against Villa... I know they lost away, but they were by far the better team that day. Wolves will let you play. I mean, Chelsea, you watch Chelsea, they're, they're a bag of nails. I think the Tottenham game suits Arsenal. They will have a go at Arsenal. All three have got Tottenham. Bournemouth at home is a good game for Arsenal. United might not be in anything there. They won't want Liverpool or Man City to win the league. And then Everton could be one of the easiest games in the history of last games of the season if they're safe, or it could be one of the hardest. So... Yeah, I like, I like Arsenal's fixtures. Man, think... Man City's running, though. I mean, that look, for, for them and what they tend to do at this oh, time well, of the Man season. I, well, look, I was just looking down the middle. I knew you were just oh looking, I were just oh. looking at Arsenal. Man oh. City's running is good. Yeah. Man City's running. I, I like Man City's running. Even, and look, the Tottenham's got to be um, arranged yet because obviously to be um, confirmed. But I, I think Man City are the team that could go unbeaten from now to the end of the season. I like Liverpool's running. Don't I know I Liverpool. It's difficult, uh, yeah, it? but, but you think Liverpool's difficult because of all the away yeah. things. But you know what, Lenny? They've got important players coming back, so they will have their big squad. It, it, I know what you're saying. It is tough. Aston Villa away, I think, on the 11th could be tough. They're still trying to go for the top four. Yeah. Let me tell you, Sai, yeah, you could on. look at that running. There's no easy games in the no, Premier League. No, Everyone's got something. Not when there's eight games. There's a lot riding on it. There's teams fighting for us um, to stay in the league. And there's not when there's three of you four. in the fight, because that's That's what I'm trying pressure. to say. Yeah, yeah. It is, so, and there's pressure on, so, yeah. I don't know. It's going to go right down to the wire. Final question on this, Lenny, and I gave you a nice easy one at the start. So yeah, here's here's another easy one, because you're not here every week. We hear from these guys every week on this. Who are you going for in terms of the title? Oh, see you, say. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Welcome along. Mahid <laughs> says City, mm -hmm. but I think... I don't want to write Arsenal off, Merce, right? I really don't, because I think defensively they've got it. But I think Liverpool will win it. 
even though I think we've got the you toughest... You just said going to be the first ones to blink. <laughs> yeah, blink, but that doesn't mean to say they won't win it. Oh, OK. Who do you think, Matt? I... Uh, I, 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 I don't see Man City losing another game. So you think City? I know, because I, I just think Liverpool and Arsenal are relentless. I think they will have to win every game.